test the abilities. It's wet though. Man, I hope I don't look stupid. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna look stupid. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Levy, and we're standing here at the bottom of the Field Test Impossible Climb. And I know, I know, I'm tired of trying to get up these things too. But here we are with 10 of the latest trail and enduro bikes to test the limits of their technical climbing abilities and maybe my patience. Why? Well, because stuff like this still matters. And many of us face this kind of stuff on every single ride we do. Okay, maybe not the beer can switchbacks in the course tape, but you get the idea. Okay, let's go over the rules. Just like all the other field tests, each bike is gonna get a couple attempts to set a high mark, and they're all wearing matching rubber as well. The enduro bikes have DHRs and assegais, while the trail bikes have DHFs and dissectors. Now, because my unpaid intern, Mike Casimer, is trapped in the States for some reason, I've had to actually pump all the tires myself to make sure they're all at matching pressures. And all the suspension is set up correctly as well. The idea here, to give the bikes a level playing field so we're testing the traction and the handling, and that's all. Okay, let's go for a walk to see where I'll be falling over. All right, here we are at the bottom of the impossible climb, and this is the start shoot. The first challenge, we're gonna go up and over these routes. Pretty simple stuff. We're gonna go straight through here and into a fairly easy right-hand corner. We gotta give those enduro bikes a chance to at least get to here, right? And that's when they're gonna see their first challenge. Now, this isn't an overly big rock, but I'm not gonna be able to just jump up over it and it's super slippery with this wet moss and lichen on it and wet roots everywhere. So that'll test the bike's traction. And then up here, if you look down, this is just full of loose rocks and wet roots. So here, I'll need to be seated. I can't just stand up and power up through this stuff like I might be able to in the dry. Traction is gonna be pretty questionable. We're gonna go up here to the next challenge. This is a double step right here where the bikes are barely gonna fit in. So especially for the longer enduro bikes, I think timing is gonna be pretty tricky because I'm gonna be going about zero mile an hour right there and probably zero mile an hour right here. So a big crux move, this is a ledge, it's not all that tall, but again, I'm gonna be going really slow. So it's gonna be a challenge on some of these longer enduro bikes to get the front end up and then hump that back end up to the top of that ledge, all at about zero miles an hour again. So let's go up a little higher. Now we have an open spot here where I was originally planning to just catch my breath and relax a bit, but instead, we put these boxes of Sierra Nevada, and I'm gonna do a loop around these this way, which sounds pretty easy. You know how to turn left, I bet, me too. Well, again, if you look down, it's just covered in loose rocks and roots, and I think there's a good chance I'm gonna fall over here, actually. And if I don't, we're gonna go up here, like so, into the final stretch. And that brings us to the top, of the impossible climb. Crushes the downs. Let's see if you can crush the climbs too. <laughs> so what happened there with the P-Train? I came up over that rock and got up over it just fine, but my speed went from one mile an hour to zero. Tried to keep it going, but was just spinning out. Again, that lack of traction. I was standing up, you gotta stay seated. So let's try the next bike. All right, Rocky Mountain, altitude. Let's see how much altitude we get before we dab here. Ah, man, this part here is trouble. All right, Ibis. Oh no. <laughs> okay, double whammy there. So I had a bit more momentum and I came up, but I'm just getting stopped right here by these steps. 
maybe it's the small wheels, we'll see, but I feel like my timing, the bike is just basically coming to a stop right here. And then, because it's so wet and the traction is so low, having a real hard time to start again. So that's it for the Ibis. We got the Nomad, the other 27.5 inch wheeled bike. Ah, oh, man. All right, Barney. Are you my friend on this climb? You're awfully big. That felt good. Barney felt good. The big travel, like you just sit in it and go, Aww. We got the 38 pound Norco Shore next. This thing is a bit of beast, a bit of a beast. I've been in the fourth or fifth cog from the top. I think I might go number three for the old shore, but we'll see what happens. There's no skinnies on this uphill, no wheelie drops. So I'm not sure if it's gonna do very good. Okay, Norco Shore, we're on the shore. This is its home. Don't you know where your home is? Go home! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> Let's just do this. I feel like this is appropriate. Hey, do you guys know where Ladies Only is? Where are all the skinnies? Can you point me towards the nearest wheelie drop to flat? Okay, propane and propane accessories. Let's see the Hank Hill bike. So again, I just came up here. I thought I would come up right through here and the rear tire just slid right out. We're on the new Stumpy now. Oh boy, does it count if I hop? Am I good? <laughs> okay. Oh, now I'm tired. How do I get up here? Ah. Okay. Specialized Stumpy sets the high mark so far. Okay, we got the Trans X with live valve suspension. Let's see what it does for me here. I feel like this is cheating, boys. Oh, f I pulled out of my pedal. We're on the trek slash. I'm gonna stay nice and calm. Ah, knocked over the beer. That's it for the slash and me. So there you have it. After 20 something attempts, that's it for the impossible climb. That remains impossible. I think this was probably the hardest impossible climb we've done yet. Thanks to the rain and all these wet routes. Both the Specialized and the Giant made it up to this big step where they were stopped dead in their tracks. Now, so while there was no winner for this impossible climb, it's these two bikes that ended up getting the highest. There you go, the fourth impossible climb. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any reviews or roundtable discussions. We'll see you next time around.